to me. I think you will learn much more by watching the ones you admire, the one you get inspiration from doing the work, rather than listening or reading their teachings about that specific craft. Photography, just like almost every other skill, is something that you acquire, and acquiring is quite different from studying. Time passes, and with that we learn new things, we set up new standards for ourselves, and hopefully we become more capable, more wise, but also a bit more perfectionist. It is exactly what I'm going through right now with my YouTube channel, trying to improve the quality of the videos by using better gear, getting better at editing to make the viewing experience more enjoyable, and also trying to improve the scripting and storytelling part. With that, I caught myself having some thoughts of uh, reducing the amount of photography behind the scenes, POV videos I would make, in order to match with the ambitions I have of improving the overall quality of my productions. But just like almost every day during my morning run, I had uh, plenty of time to think about different things, including that topic, and I realize once again the importance and the value of watching and therefore making those POV photography videos. Too much blue on the left side of the blue bench and the blue vending machine. That perfectly balanced composition. We have some birds flying like on this negative space with the, the sky. Could be interesting, but can't really order the birds to uh, fly in this uh, area of the frame. I like this one with the vending machine as a foreground, but someone with a contrasty uh, clothes, like with probably a light clothes, white something in this uh, green area uh, next to the store would be the perfect match but so far it doesn't feel like there's so much people walking around to me i think you will learn much more by watching the ones you admire the one you get inspiration from doing the work rather than listening or reading their teachings about that specific craft focusing first on taking in a lot of it so you can understand what triggers the curiosity of that other person and what brought to that shot so that you can then practice yourself and adapt to your own environment your own gear and your own schedule of course i still believe that there is a value to studying things in a more academic way listening to a lecture reading books making practical exercise but photography just like almost every other skills is something that you acquire and acquiring is quite different from studying The retro look of this shop so to figure out a composition that makes sense we getting this kind of flat two dimension shot This is kind of feeling 
Now we can make a parallel with language learning and in recent years so many observations and studies have proved that language acquisition methods are far superior than the traditional language studying method. The idea is focusing first on tons and tons of natural input so then you can start talking in a much more natural way by mimicking what you have heard from native speakers of the target language. Reading textbooks and talking a broken Japanese for example with other people just as beginner as you is naturally the most effective way. I'm taking this example because this is exactly what I did to uh, learn Japanese all by myself up to the N1 level just to give you an indication. But some of you may know that I was studying in a language school here but this was more something I had to do first to enter in Japan for an extended period of time. But for the most part my Japanese learning was done through immersion and mass input method and that leads me to photography and more specifically those kind of POV videos. We are really lucky now that the barrier to entry both for the creator and the consumer became really thin. Sure, the creator has to invest in some camera equipment and some sort of action cam to make it possible, but I really don't want to imagine the cost of a similar kind of setup even just 25 years ago. For the consumer too, it's virtually free. There is no limit and no subscriptions required to watch hundreds of hours of video and taking that input. Lights, my golden lights, but here in this uh, in this shrine with this combination of color, the more soft light is is working quite well, I think. Studying about settings for the more practical side and studying about light and color theory for the more creative side is certainly useful, but seeing the ones that were able to take pictures you wish you would be able to recreate in your own way is where the true value is. Sometimes it's way less than you think, so it breaks the kind of thought you may have like, oh, anyway I can't reproduce the same thing, I don't have the same opportunity where I live, etc. But sometimes also you notice that it takes a lot of discipline to go out when the weather is not good, for example that it also took a certain amount of luck but also a big amount of instinct and ability to react. That may seem difficult but seeing someone going through all these steps and documenting them will demystify the whole thing and will increase your confidence in your ability to do the same. of this composition you have the road that makes this simple leading line but still it's it's uh, uh, going right at some point there so it has a little bit of uh, of twist in a way there's beautiful trees um, and here also on the left a uh, little bit of this uh, bush so we have this um, reminder of a uh, little, little green reminder and yeah now we're just waiting for a subject like this won't make any popular gallery or whatever, but just a simple one. concerned that just watching too much of what the others are doing will lead you to just copying what they do, but I don't think it's the case. To give you a bit more context, I bought my first DSLR maybe 9 years ago and I've been on and off taking pictures from that time, but about 3-4 years ago when I picked up street photography more seriously, I was watching tons and tons of videos on YouTube from probably creators you know, just like Faisal Westcott, Roman Fox, Ulysses Aoki, Samuel Lintaro, James Popsis, North Borders, Optical Wonders, so if you know them you would know that they are all doing very different things 
and they are all doing something that is quite different from what I'm doing now. And I'm being really honest that I've not done any intentional efforts to be different from what they are doing. It just became naturally. I really think that taking a lot of inputs and if you take them from different sources and different photography genre will definitely not go in the way and will not be an obstacle of creating your own style. By the way, I'm not trying to place myself as a master of photography, just have a little bit more experience in some area of photography than probably a certain amount of people. And when you have a little bit more knowledge about something, you are already legitimate enough to teach about it in a certain way. that said POV photography video will stay and will always be an important part of my channel and I hope you're happy about that and you will be watching them. I'm super curious to know your opinion on that so don't hesitate to drop a comment. I try to reply to almost everyone but if no reply from me you can be certain that I read all of them with a lot of consideration. I will end this video by informing you that I just launched a Patreon account. I'm still at the start of this full-time YouTube journey uh, fully dedicated to it and trying to make it uh, viable so your support would give me a huge financial boost of course but also a big confidence boost thank you for checking the link in the description and i will leave you right here with the remaining of that uh, photography session without commenting so you can better focus on it and see you